Hi guys, uh, Nicholas here from 123 Migration. Uh, I just want to have a talk to you about the Northern Territory and what I wanted to do was just kind of outline what's going on um, and I guess the best way to do this is to understand that the Northern Territory is a, a not a state in Australia, but it's a territory. They, they call it a diff different thing. And they're trying to get as many migrants as they can because they, they want to improve their population. The thing is, this can be very complicated in terms of what the Northern Territory is actually, actually offering. But what I wanted to do was split it up into two for you so that you get a better idea uh, of how it's structured. So firstly, we have to talk about employer-sponsored visas. And all I'm doing is talking about work visas here. So employer-sponsored visas, uh, there are benefits for businesses and there are less conditions for uh, visa applicants. And then on the other side, you've got independent visas, okay? Now, um, adding more points and doing those sorts of things. So if we look at them separately, uh, we'll find that uh, the employer-sponsored visas uh, require you to have an employment contract with an employer in the Northern Territory. Whereas the independent visa, um, it's, it's based on a, a point system and what you have to do is get as many points so that you can receive an invitation to apply for a visa. Okay, So this one, you don't need an employer but you need a high amount of points based on your age, education, experience and English. Uh, so you know, that, that can be a, a bit of a better visa, but it's harder to get, whereas the employer-sponsored visa, um, yeah, you don't need an invitation, you just need the work contract. So, let's have a look at what's going on and what benefits they are for the employer-sponsored visa. And what the Northern Territory have done is they've uh, come to an agreement called the DAMA, or Designated Area Migration Agreement. Okay, and this web page here that I'm looking at uh, gives you an idea about uh, what are, is available under this designated area migration agreement. Before we go into anything, what I do want to say is that uh, you still need to apply uh, for a standard visa. So the thing is that there's no Northern Territory uh, special visa or miraculous visa there's none of that, you still need to go through the normal channels of applying for a visa, okay? Even if we have a look at the immigration website, uh, so we'll find here that if we have a look at the menu, there's a, a nice uh, part of this new website. If we look at visas, getting a visa and list of all visas, we just get a list of every single visa is available that's available. And I'd just like to, to show you this. These are the working and skilled visas right here. Um, but there is no working and skilled visas particular to the Northern Territory. And what we'll find is that really they're looking at helping you to apply for the 482 visa, which is the temporary skilled skill shortage visa. Okay, so it's a temporary work visa that they're helping you apply for. Uh, if we have a look at the introduction here, and as I said, there's a lot of information under this page. I'm not going to go through it all, um, but the introduction outlines that uh, this is to help you um, help businesses enter a labor agreement with you and workers are then granted a 482 visa. Okay, so this Dharma is all about a temporary work visa. Um, it does say under here that there are pathways to permanent residency, but obviously on your 482 visa, you need to work for your employer for a while before you can even think about applying uh, for the pathway to permanent residency. Uh, they've got a lot of occupations included in the agreements, but they have a lot of occupations which, um, yeah, things like truck drivers, baristas, a lot in hospitality and stuff like that you're still going to need a, a decent level of English. You're still going to need to be able to communicate. There are some extra occupations that are available, but you have to remember that you also need experience in these occupations. Uh, you might be able to use one of your certificates or diploma or something like that, but with that diploma, you're still going to need some experience uh, for this, but it's going to be less than it normally is, okay? And you can find this information 
under this overseas worker to demonstrate qualifications and experience. So what I suggest you do is that you browse through the occupations included in the agreement. You need to demonstrate in terms of the qualifications and experience, okay? Because it's not just going to the Northern Territory and saying, hey, I'm here and give me a work visa, okay? It doesn't work like that. The three things that I wanted to note is it's easier for business you still need a decent level of English. You're still going to need some level of experience, okay? So those are the three things that I just wanted to kind of outline to you, and that's all in this web page here for you to look at. What we want to do is also flip over to the opportunities that are available for the independent visa, okay? Now, if you study in the Northern Territory, uh, for two years and you receive a certificate, what you're going to get uh, five points for studying in a regional area and another five points for studying in Australia for two years and, and obtaining your qualification. So you'll get 10 points there. Uh, you know, your age is very important, uh, occupation, uh, experience, and also your education are important. The most important thing uh, about these independent visas is going to be your level of English. All right, so let's go into this independent skill visa. I will also give you a link to this website, Migrate to Work. We've got this temporary skill shortage, which we just talked about is the Dharma. Uh, here it is there. And But what we want to talk about is the nomination, because with the independent visas, you can get nominated, you can get an extra five points if you're non nominated by the state or the territory, an extra 10 if um, it, it's for a, a regional nomination. But you, you have to remember that that isn't yet a permanent visa, that will move into a permanent visa after you live two years. So Northern Territory Government visa nomination, and I'm not going to go into all of the details for people overseas. A lot more difficult if you are overseas. There's a lot more opportunity if you already live in Australia, and if you are considering to study in uh, the Northern Territory, then that can give you a lot of benefits as well. So what they're, what they're saying is important information if you already live in, uh, in Australia. What they will do is they will consider, so they don't have to approve anything, so it's a little bit different to a visa application where they have to apply. In these circumstances, they will apply, but they don't have to approve. You have to convince them a little bit. So if you've lived in the Northern Territory for at least six months uh, and you've worked in your skilled occupation or a closely related field for at least six months, uh, then they're going to allow you to apply for a, a Northern Territory nomination. Fantastic, okay? But it gets a lot easier if you study for two years in the Northern Territory and you graduate in the Northern Territory. All they require you to do is provide a letter showing your commitment to the Northern Territory and six months of bank statements showing transactions uh, as evidence of living in the Northern Territory. So they make it a lot easier for uh, international graduates uh, who study in the Northern Territory to actually um, get a, a nomination. If you've got a good level of English and you're increasing it past seven in your IELTS, then really you're looking at making a lot of inroads, okay? Remember that most of these skilled um, work visas, for a permanent skilled work visas, you need a level of English at least of six in all bands uh, in your IELTS uh, or the equivalent in another test or um, to get more opportunities you need to get seven in all bands. There's also opportunities for people that have actually graduated uh, in Australia, not necessarily in the Northern Territory, but they're on their, their graduate visa and now they're looking for opportunities. So that's really for the independent visa. Um, hopefully they're, they're the, the, the two main ones that, that are available and that really lead to pathways for permanent residency. Um, obviously, it's not easy, but there are a lot more opportunities in the Northern Territory at the moment than uh, in other states where they're trying to uh, get more people to, to be in those regional areas and this is how they're doing it. So hopefully that was a good overview for you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video, look after yourselves, improve your English, and please, uh, if you're looking for uh, to enrol in a school or anything like that, please contact us. 
uh, we have agreements with schools in the Northern Territory and we can certainly help you out. Uh, and also what we'll do is we'll help you uh, look at all of these rules and get you on a pathway. So I hope yeah, you've, uh, you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.